Today, I'm going to show you how to create a tilt shift effect in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning fun. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to use the tilt shift feature in Photoshop. Now, this is actually a filter that will allow you to blur the background of your photo, effectively decreasing the depth of field. So, what does that mean? Well, you can use this filter to draw more attention on your subject. All right, guys, we got a great tutorial. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. Okay, so here's our image for today. We got a really nice looking uh, deer, antelope, ibex, animal type thing going on here. And uh, you can actually download this exact image. Just follow the link in the description right down below so you can follow along. So in this case, we do have the backgrounds already a little bit out of focus, but I just want to knock it like way out of focus and that's going to help us focus on our subject. Now in this case, we're, you know, we're using an animal here, but you can totally use the same technique with people. So I'm going to start off by doing a duplicate of this layer. I'm going to hit Control or Command J, and that's going to duplicate our background layer. So you can see we have our layer one now. Okay. Now you'll notice as I zoom in that our subject is already kind of in focus, and the background's already a little bit out of focus. So in order to make this tool work, the first thing you need to do is select out your subject. And depending on your subject in the background, this can be done in a many, many different ways. You can use the pen tool to cut out your subject. In this case, we're going to use the select focus area to cut out our subject. And if you want more videos, just type in the Flurn search bar, cut out, and you're going to find a ton of videos on how to cut things out. OK, so jumping back into Photoshop, we are going to be going to select and then down to focus area. Now, this is a feature within Photoshop that will basically allow you to select the areas that are in focus and out of area focuses won't out of area out of focus areas won't be selected. So, here's what all you need to know. Basically in your parameters here, your in focus range, this is the lower your number here, the less is going to be in focus. The higher your number, the more is going to be in focus. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out here. We're going to, basically, we, you just want to kind of find a number. There we go. That starts to knock out some of your background. There we go. So somewhere right about there, you can see a, a lot of our background is actually being removed. Let's pump that up to three. There we go. And that looks pretty good as of now. We can actually add or remove areas to our selection as well. So if we're zooming in, this is our subject here. I want to add areas to my selection. Simply click on your add icon and just paint over the areas you'd like to add to your selection. Super easy. Okay. If you wanted to subtract something, simply click on your subtract icon and just subtract. You can just kind of just like paint right around there. All right. Something like that looks pretty good and it's going to remove it. Now, it's got a little bit of like a leg missing here, so we're going to fill that in as well. All right. <laughs> and it brought some of our background with it. Not a big deal. Just grab the minus tool and kind of paint a little bit there in the background. Most of the time, selections in Photoshop just need a little bit of help, and that's, that's totally okay. All right. Paint that in there a little bit. All right. That's pretty good. Now, it's not perfect just yet. We are going to use a refine edge filter. But you can see it's done a pretty good job selecting out our subject and the foreground as well. Let's just add a little bit of this area here. So you can just be pretty sloppy. It'll generally know like what you want to add, what you want to include or not include. OK, that looks great. So let's hit OK. Now, this is going to output to a selection. So I'm going to hit OK here. And now you can see our foreground is pretty well selected. It's not perfect, but we can still refine this selection. So now we're going to jump in and show you how to refine the edge of a selection. Jumping back into Photoshop, here's our layer. Again, we have our selection active, but it's not perfect. So we really want to refine this. We're going to go up to select and then down to select and mask. Now, if you're using an older version of Photoshop, this is going to say refine edge. They do something that basically the same thing, select and mask just a little bit more advanced with newer versions. So let's go to select and mask. There we go. And you can see everything that is selected now is that uh, nice red color that it's going to depend on your view. So you may see it as marching ants. You may see this on black, on white, black and white, 
all kinds of different views here. I'm going to keep with this overlay view. Now, when we zoom in here, we're just going to start off looking at this guy's head, okay, right around here. You can see it's not a perfect selection. So we're going to start off using our, here we go, let's just hover over here, the Refine Edge Brush Tool, okay, and that's just going to help us refine the edge. So with the Refine Edge Brush Tool, simply paint right around the edge of your subject, and it's going to figure out what is your subject and what's the background, and it's basically just going to fix your edges up a little bit. So I'm going to use a small brush now and just kind of go right around the edge of our subject. There we go. And painting around the edge of the subject just kind of helps, especially because we're, uh, we're using an animal here and you know, this, he's got like hair and stuff like that. And so you just want to make sure that the hair actually does get included in the selection. So I'm starting from the outside and just painting in just a little bit. There we go. And you can see it just kind of in areas like the hair on the back, it just kind of cleans things up and fixes your selection. Now, if you do get any of these red areas like inside of your subject, let's say we do this and we have some red area in here now, you can simply click here on your brush tool and just paint that in and it's going to make sure that that area does get added to your selection. There we go. And then we'll go back to the refine edge. All right looking good. So let's make our brush a little bit bigger and I'm just going to go right around our subject. There we go. And this isn't like a hundred percent necessary step. It's just going to make your edge look a little bit better. So if you're a perfectionist like me, it's a good thing to do. So here in the tail, you can see that like a lot of the tail isn't really selected very well. So this is, it's going to really help out here. So simply paint over the tail and it's going to do a much better job selecting out that hair. All right, there we go. Let's go right around here. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to grab, let's click right here. This is our brush tool. All right, they're always changing the names of these things. So <laughs> anyway, we're just gonna include, make sure the little ankle area is included in the selection. All right, let's zoom in here. Make sure the rest of the leg is included in the selection. You can hold Alt or Option, and this will turn this into a minus brush. So you can add or subtract to your selection really, really easily. All right, so we're just gonna subtract all this out because that's just like uh, grass and stuff like that. All right. Cool, looking great. We're almost done. Let's go ahead and zoom in. We're just going to minus this out. So hold Alt or Option to minus an area out from a selection. And then there we go. We're just painting that right back in now. All right. And really this depends on, it's going to be different on every single image, how difficult it is to cut your subject out of the background and how long you need to spend doing it. Because honestly, sometimes it, you know, sometimes you can get it close enough and it'll be just fine. Other times you really want to make it precise. And a lot of the time that kind of ends up with like, who's this image for? If it's just for you and you're kind of, you know, playing around, you don't need to get it perfect. Maybe if it's a client that in that case, you may want to get a little bit better than um, just spend a little more time basically. All right. So let's go ahead and paint in here. I'm going to see what we can get out of, see if we can get a little bit more of this tail. There we go. Just a little bit better of a selection right around the tail area. Cool. So you can see these tools really do come in handy when trying to improve a selection. All right. There we are. So this guy's pretty well selected out now. And we can even do the grass as well. So let's go back to our Refine Edge. There we go. Right here's our Refine Edge brush. And we'll just do a little bit of work on the grass area as well. It's just going to kind of create a little bit more of an even transition from in focus to out of focus areas. All right. There we go. Now our selection's not going to be nearly as like uh, blotchy. It's kind of like, you can see it's just kind of like, you know, this bit of grass is selected and the rest is not. This kind of just like 
gives you an in-between. And generally, we'll make, just make your selections look a little bit less, uh, less like Photoshop-y. All right, almost done here, guys. Well, with this part of it, anyway. Great. So we're selected. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, right here in our selection dialog, uh, this is going actually to output to a selection, which is exactly what we want. So let's hit OK there. And we've now outputted this to a selection. So we've got a really nice selection around our animal. And now we are actually ready to start our tilt shift effect. So jumping back into Photoshop, I've got a great selection here. And I want to make sure I save this selection. So I'm going to go up here to select. And we're going to go down to save selection. All right. And we're just going to call this subject. That way, if I ever need to get back this exact selection, it's super easy to do. Let's go ahead and deselect. OK, Control or Command D to deselect. And I'll just go to select and then down to load selection. There we go. And I'll simply choose our channel subject. There we go. And hit OK. And you can see now we have a selection, which is perfect. All right. Now it's time to go ahead and do our tilt shift blur on this image. So I'm going to go up to filter, down to blur gallery, and down to tilt shift. There we go. Now adding a tilt shift blur, let's go ahead and start uh, blurring our image. And we're going to see, uh-oh, it's actually blurring the exact opposite of what we want. <laughs> not a big deal at all. Let's hit escape here. If that happens, it's not a big deal. Just simply go to select, and then down to inverse. OK, so we were selected just on our subject. Now our background's selected. So now let's try the same thing again. We're going to go to Filter. We're going to go down to Blur Gallery and over to Tilt Shift. All right, and now we can see, yep, our background is going out of focus. So basically, this is your blur center here. Now, you want to put this pretty much on the same plane as your subject. So you can see this is going to go right over here where our subject is. Just put it right around where your subject's feet are, and you should be good to go. OK, now this area is going to be basically our feathering. So it's, this is going to start and stop our blur. So let's go ahead and crank our blur up. There we go. And you can see as I move this up and down, this is basically the range at which it's going to blur. So we've got our midpoint here. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring our midpoint down a little bit. And we'll bring our top point up a little bit. Because we want to create a pretty realistic blur here. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now, if all this stuff is kind of getting in your way, if you're like, oh, I can't even see. There's all these lines and stuff like that. Hit Control or Command H, and that's going to hide everything. OK? Control or Command H one more time, and it'll all come back. So you can still actually move these things around if you hit, like, if you know where they are. It's so like click there, Control or Command H, and you can still move everything around. This will just allow you to look at your image while you're doing your blur, and you won't be as kind of like you'll be able to see what it's actually going to look like. So Control or Command H to hide that, and Control or Command H to unhide. So now that we've got, this looks pretty good here. So we've brought our central point right down to the sub, our feet of the subject here. OK, we brought our first line all the way down, and our second line is right up there. So we want a nice gradual blur. So let's hit Control or Command H, and we can see here within the tilt shift, we can control our blur. So this is what it looks like with no blur at all. OK? And we can continue to increase the blur. And as I increase the blur, basically, it draws less attention to the background and allows us to focus on our subject. Now, if you go too far, you're just going to get it, it's not going to look real. So <laughs> I don't recommend going that far with it because it, it just kind of looks like you did that in Photoshop. But most of the time, you can get away with a decent bit of blur, and it will look pretty good. So I think that looks great. Our subject's cut out. We, our background is nice and blurry. Everything totally works for me. Let's go ahead and hit OK here. There we go. And keep in mind, we are on a new layer. So if I ever need to get back to my background, I just turn this layer off, and we're good to go. So check that out. Already really cool. So that's our first tilt shift effect. Now, basically what we're going for is a very shallow depth of field here. OK, I want it to make it look like only the animal is in focus and that the background is out of focus, but also the foreground has to be out of focus too. So what we're going to do now is load a second tilt shift effect in the photo, making the foreground out of focus. So jumping back into Photoshop, now we need to select out the foreground of our photo, which is this area here uh, in front of our subject. 
Now, we're going to use our marquee tool, rectangular marquee tool. I don't have to cut out my subject this time, so that's great. It's going to be a lot faster. We're just going to select out this part of our image. There we go. Now we can run another tilt shift filter on just this part. So let's go back up to filter. We're going to go to our blur gallery and down to a tilt shift. OK, now in this case, we want to bring our central point here. We want to bring that again to the feet of our subject. OK, we're going to bring our midpoint right up there. OK, and then this guy to right there. So again, we can choose to increase or decrease the amount of blur on the image. And we want to go again for something that actually looks real. Like this is, you know, when you do something like this, that, that is just not going to look real. Let me hit Controller Command H to hide that. And we can all agree that does not look real. So let's take our bottom line here. Again, you can, you can move all these lines even if you can't see them, okay? So if you kind of know where they are, you can just click and move them around a little bit. But if that's too confusing for you, not a big deal. Hit Controller Command H again, and they'll, they'll come up again. So let's go ahead and click and drag this down until we start to get a more realistic looking blur. Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. Now we can also change the amount of blur on our foreground. So we want something that matches with our background. Again, that's obviously way too much and that's way too little. So something right about there is starting to blur our foreground in a nice realistic way. So looks pretty good. And this you can pretty much do by, by look. You can actually use the same blur that you did for your background as well. And that's just going to ensure that you have uh, basically the same, same properties. OK, let's hit OK. So we've got two blurs going on with this photo now. We have a blur in our background and a blur in our foreground. And that's how we create our tilt shift effect. Let's go ahead and take a look at the before and after. Here's our before and after, our tilt shift effect, drawing more attention to our subject. All right, guys, that's all there is to it. If you want to do this on your own, just follow these key steps. Start by selecting out your subject. Now, depending on your subject and the background, this can be done in many different ways. In this case, we went up to select and then down to focus area, and we selected the area that was in focus. Now, chances are at this point, your selection is not going to be perfect. So go up to select and then down to select and mask, where you can use the refine edge tool to make sure the edges of your selection are perfect. After selecting your subject, go up to select and then down to inverse. This will select your background. Next, go to filter, down to blur gallery, and over to tilt shift. Make sure you take your blur center down to where your subject is, and then you can choose the amount of blur you'd like to apply on the background. In this example, we also blurred the foreground of our photo using the exact same filter. Again, just make sure the blur center is located where the feet of your subject are and blur the foreground similarly to how you did the background. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's episode. And don't forget, you can download this image on flurn.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>